Hello guys, welcome to TMXing Adventures, Lisa here. Hey look, we're continuing on our healthy snack series and I hope you're feeling inspired and seeing how this can work for you. Now today we're going to make these beautiful hidden veggie sausage rolls. Now I am taking some shortcuts, mainly because I'm actually wanting to feed these to the kids for lunch and just one of those days. So I'm going to go straight into to this recipe and I'm going to skip the part where we make puff pastry. I'm actually going to scroll straight down, go past the puff pastry and start at the filling. So let's scroll down and start at the step which is down here where it's asking for the ingredients. Now by the way I can highly recommend if you've never tried the vegetarian sausage rolls, we're not typically vegetarian but let me tell you your friends will not know that they are vegetarian. Walnuts, feta, amazing. Okay so give them a go. First things first is some parsley fresh. I don't have fresh at the moment. Um, so I'm just gonna put in a heat generous, probably teaspoon of dry parsley, okay? What I do have is the next ingredient, sage. I reckon if you didn't have sage, just skip it out. I think you could go without, okay? So I've got some sage out of the veggie patch and then we got some bread torn. Now I'm gonna make it uh, gluten-free using our gluten-free rolled oats. You could certainly use obviously your bread. I've also done this before with just like flour. I might be a bit short. I might be topping it up with something else. Oh, I'm six grams short. That's not the end of the world. I do have some pepitas. Uh, I might put them in there from yesterday's video. Still here. There we go. I could have gone short, but it's actually sometimes a bit hard to deal with your sausage rolls if they're too, um, too wet. Like you can't roll them. They kind of go and they ooze out the ends. Uh, so yes, um, let's go next. You can see my table wiggling around on with my lid and my measuring cup and let's chop this down. So this oats are going to become oat flour in there. How cool is that? All right, so you can do that with your salmon mix, make your own almond meal, oat flour, um, rice flour, things like that. So it's eight seconds, speed eight. Let's spin it up and keep going. Do you say hi if you're watching on today? Hey, Carissa, lovely to have you on today. So let's go next. Transfer to a bowl and set aside. Oh, I'm not even gonna, oh no, I am gonna do that because I'm not even gonna bother doing that. I actually have some bowls left over from yesterday too, so I'm just gonna put that in. And look at that, I've literally made my own flour. How cool is that? I love that we can do that with a feather mix. We know exactly what's in it. How good is that? So you've just got that there ready to go. As I said, you know, if you were stuck and you didn't have ingredients for that, just use some plain flour. Skip it and put plain flour in instead, okay? Next. Okay, two garlic cloves. How did I not read that on the instructions? I'm gonna leave the garlic cloves out for now. I'll stir them through later because I didn't bring them down because somehow I missed that. I have no idea how. Okay, eight, 80 grams of onion. Now, you guys know we go a bit, sh bit lower on the onion typically because the kids are not fond of it. Okay, courgettes, 150 grams. Actually, it's made me realize I think I've forgotten my oil as well, but that's okay, we'll just... Uh, Make do. Now courgettes, for those of you who don't know, are zucchinis. Okay, this is a UK recipe, I'm going to guess, because it's not an ounce, so it's not American. Um, so that's why it's got courgettes. There you go. Interestingly, the search in Cookie Do is getting better. When you type in um, zucchinis, it will find recipes with courgettes too. So it's worked that out, which I love. Okay, carrots, 80 grams of carrots. Let's chop these up. I've got really small carrots lately. Okay, in they go. Oh, need a bit more weight. I'll actually just add a little bit more with the zucchini. Um, if I was in the kitchen and I was doing this, you know, not on a video with you guys, and I didn't have any more carrot, I'd be looking for a chunk of sweet potatoes, some pumpkin. I'd probably put the skin on the pumpkin um, and put that in. That's fine. They would be the things I'd be thinking about. Even some broccoli stem or cauliflower stem would work perfectly fine as an additional bit of boost in this recipe. It does have pork mince coming up as well. Um, no, I don't have my oil in here. I'll just skip that out for the moment. Um, it has pork mince coming up. Again, you could swap that. You could be making this into chicken. You could put some chicken breast in and turbo that down. You could put, uh, obviously, beef mince in and make your own beef flavoured. Like the, the opportunities are pretty endless on what flavours you could do with this. And I love that it's such a good base for that. Okay, on with the lid. By the way, the chicken meatballs the other day, amazing the kids just thought they were phenomenal so that was that was a big win they are on the to-do list regularly okay so five seconds speed five okay i just heard a child 
that side. I wonder if I can coerce them into getting me the oil and the, um, the garlic. So scrape down the sides to push it all down. I'll get that into the bowl and then we're going to turn this up to speed and it's going to actually cook this off for a couple of minutes. It's going to soften it and sweeten it. Now feedback on yesterday's recipe. Yesterday I showed you those sweet potato uh, beautiful oatmeal bars. Um, hey Finley, could you get me the olive oil and the, the jar of garlic paste out of the fridge please? Thank you. Yes, jackpot. Doesn't happen very often. Um, you know what, by cooking off, by not cooking off that sweet potato, it certainly lacked the sweetness it ordinarily does, okay? So I would highly suggest not skimping that cooking step. Like I only skimped it anyway because my family drove in the driveway, but it certainly made a difference. We've made it plenty of times properly and it's amazing. So don't skip the cook off, it sweetens it considerably. Now, if you're cooking along with this later, what do you need out on the bench? It says to have salt. Our salt substitute is our veggie stock, okay? Use this instead, it lifts the nutritional value and makes it taste better as well. You're gonna need some pepper and you're gonna need your mince, okay? Now, little tip with your mince, if you're mincing your own meat, it's a good idea to do it at the beginning. So after you transfer this aside, put your meat in and hit the turbo button three times to make uh, minced meat if it's uh, frozen. Yeah, three times for frozen, five for fresh. Had to think about that for a second. I think he's having trouble finding the olive oil or maybe it's the ginger, um, the garlic that's making it hard. But yes, I'm so excited for this recipe. It has great reviews. Anyone watching along got a favorite sausage roll recipe? Now, as you think about how to store this, if you're not eating it straight away, now my family had eat it up straight away because they are like that when it comes to food. But this is perfect for actually making your puff pastry or cutting your puff pastry into rectangles. So usually a puff pastry is a big square. You are amazing, thank you, Finley. All right, let's put some oil in and I'll come back to puff pastry tips in a second. Smelling amazing, oh my goodness. All right, that there. This here. Two, I think it was two garlic cloves, so we'll go two teaspoons. We do actually have garlic at the moment, but you know, that's just the easiest thing to grab. Um, I would highly suggest making your own garlic paste if you've got time. Okay, so making it for storage. Cut your, if you're doing puff pastry you bought, like I'm gonna do today, cut it in half so you end up with a big rectangle. Then what you do is, you know how they've got blue backing on them? Keep the blue backing, cut that in half as well, so you've got two big rectangles, and actually make it and roll it up on the backing so you can freeze it on the backing with that as like the protective layer to stop it sticking to each other. Then when you want it, you can get it out and cook it, or you could also cook it and then, you know, put it in the, the lunch bag for uh, the week ahead, and it will be perfectly, or the day ahead, it'll be fine to just defrost it eat as well. Okay, so it works both ways, but we really, when we went caravanning, we would often pre-make them raw, so we would make the filling, put it in, just make sure the filling is cool before you put it in, because if you're not cooking it straight away, that's not good, it's gonna melt your pastry. But roll them up, leave that blue wrapping around the outside, so roll it up, but release a little bit so you can tuck it in, and then you've got that, and I used to put them in a big A4 glad bag, freeze them, and then they could come straight out of the freezer into the oven, a really hot oven for about 20 minutes, I, don't even, I think it's 15 minutes and they're done. Like they are amazing, okay? So that's a really easy way to have these ready to go for dinner, lunches, snacks, when life's busy, okay? So pre-rolling them, ready to go, uh, but not cooking them necessarily. So we only have one minute to go. This is smelling absolutely amazing. Uh, I would love to know if you are watching on what have you had a chance to make lately? What have you been cooking in your Thermomix? Is there anything that's been a favorite or a standout? Do let me know. I've been having lots of fun playing with the cutter. So if you haven't organized your cutter demo, do let me know. I do have um, a cook along for those of you who are my customers coming up at the end of month. And if you wanna do that as your demo, I would invite your two guests to come play on your Thermomix with you for the cook along. Uh, that is another way of doing it too. Let me know if you'd like those in, that information. Send me a DM so I can get you that info. But I've gotta say, I'm actually hugely impressed with the cutter. Uh, the grating cheese, the small, the big grate, the salad, chopping that so quickly, I'm blown away, okay? And you guys probably got that impression the other day. I was a bit nervous, but now it's feeling like second nature. It's it's really, 
really next level what it can do so that's super cool as well but let me know if you've got questions about that or concerns or you know you've got the hesitation you want to talk through happy to have a chat about that if you want to do an online demo not you know on the cook along but separately happy to organize that as well with you and a couple of friends uh, i'll cook for you guys i'll show you the cutter in action and get you a host reward so let me know if that's of interest okay 20 seconds to go this is they're going to be the cool down and then we're going to finish this off so by the way i think in this recipe capsicum would be yummy as well um, I don't have capsicum in it today, but I think it would be really nice. And if your kids have a bit of a sweet tooth, if you are cooking for kids for school, um, putting some uh, tomato sauce into this, I think would actually really complement the flavor, especially since they possibly would like tomato sauce on it. We'll put it into it. Um, we've been actually using a fair bit of tomato relish lately on things. So I presume my kids will put tomato relish on top but because if you're taking it for lunches maybe it would be better to put it in the mix so that you don't have to have it on just an idea all right next up look at how soft they are they smell amazing okay mince broken up this is where you want it to be cool before you're adding the mince if you want to freeze it okay so that's just so that it's food safe still you don't want to make your unless it cooks off in a second i don't feel it does though but let's check if it doesn't cook off you don't want to mix your hot with your cold to then freeze okay so just a little food safety caution clause from me so let's put this in as i said make your own if you can um we are at times a little limited on what we can get a hand or hand on okay half to one teaspoon of salt to taste there is no parmesan or anything like that in here so it's okay to you know i guess use the salt that you're comfortable with you don't have to take into account another saltiness i'm going to put in that's one teaspoon i'm going to put in a little bit more i'm just going to go one and a half normally i'd actually double it but i think we're having a moment in our family where it's everything seems a little salty at times and i don't know why so i'm just going to err on the side of caution knowing you can add more later that you can't take out all right some pepper that's the next step in a second and pepper uh nutmeg i don't think i bought that in oh no i do because i have it here from yesterday hang on nutmeg excellent didn't think i had that that's the garlic one let's try this one we want one eighth it's the teeny tiniest littlest bit okay and let's finish off by putting the lid on and it's going to oh breadcrumbs which are oats let's finish and on with the lid and the measuring cup and next yeah it's just got a 30 second mix through no temperature on speed four reverse so that's all we need to do to finish this off all right nearly done hey marilyn how are you you're actually on live today can you believe it so Nearly done. I'm going to take this off so you can see what's happening in there. Alright, I like to be able to take that off and show you guys what's happening inside your Thermomix. That's a beautiful time there, that time to actually put away your stuff in the kitchen. I started to organise my bench here to walk things back. Uh, it's a great time. That's the beauty of Thermomix, right? You get these little pockets of time which actually you can do so much in. So that's mixed through. So now it's going to scrape down the sides of the spatula, insert the measuring cup. It's going to do it again for 30 seconds. I'm not going to do that. You guys know me better than that. So that's actually ready to go. It's well distributed. I'm happy with that. Um, and it's a good texture. That's a perfect texture. It's not sloppy. It's actually the perfect texture for sausage rolls. Okay, so I'm happy not to skip that off. And now it says to put it in your puff, like roll out your puff pastry, put it in your puff pastry. I'm going to wear, use squares. I'm short cutting. I'm going to put these in the oven for the kids for lunch today. But otherwise, thanks for joining me today. I will take a photo. I will share it. Those of you on YouTube, you get it at the beginning of the end. Those of you on Facebook, I really try and put the picture up later so you can see the amazing food. And I know as well, sometimes things get lost and they're hard to find on Facebook. So hopefully the picture helps point you back to the video as well. And do, of course, say hi. Share these with friends and family who have a Thermomix or maybe they need a Thermomix, but particularly those who have a Thermomix already. These recipes 
99.9% can be made on TM31, TM5, or even another thermo cooker. Oh, and obviously six. So, you know, share it with them so that they can see how easy life is when they kind of use their Thermomix to its capacity. But otherwise, uh, guys, thanks for joining me today. I will be back with more videos either this afternoon or tomorrow. Healthy snacks continuing through to the end of this month, which, can you believe it? We are 12 days from the end of January. <laughs> anyway, take care, and I'll see you again soon. So, bye for now.